I love it. Good morning or good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day this is for you. Right, yeah, morning for me, as per usually. Um, how goes it for you? Yep, start out with this much. Had some sad stuff happening. Well, emotions releasing, right? You gotta clean out the old to make way for the new, right? You know, gotta clean out the old shit, because I believe in the good things coming, coming, coming. I believe in the good things coming, coming, coming. Out of darkness, line heart pumping, pumping, pumping. In the white light, all things running, running, running. Who have I been? Who am I becoming? Coming, coming. Yes, knuckle bear and medicine for the people. Darkest night. Yes, I, last time I tried to sing a little bit of that, I got the words mixed up, right? So, there we go. Let's move into our Mondays. Mending Mondays. Memory Mondays. Huh? Memories of the way we were. <laughs> Weird old, right? You gotta swing it. You gotta swing it. That's the thing. You cleanse out all that old stuff. You let all that old stuff go. You got room for new stuff to come in. Right? I don't want to hang on to those sad emotions, make him go woo hoo hoo woo hoo hoo. Not to make fun of me, gotta honor, honor that little in there. Been through a lot. It's a lot for one human being, but hey, I signed up for this journey. So, I'm not here to complain. You know, it's just acknowledging, yeah, it's kind of uh, difficult, hey? Eh? It's kind of difficult. In this world, we get set up sometimes for failure. I don't know. How do, how do you feel about that? What does your life say to you? What does your life experience is, right? What have, you, what have you gone through in your life? You know, that says, hey, maybe this is what I should do. Maybe, hey, because I went through all this, I would be an expert at that, right? Sometimes, you know, what we're meant to do ain't always what we think it is. I don't know. Right? Some passions are just meant to be those hobbies and not those purposes. Just the way to release so that we can do our, 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 our purpose. What is that, right? Maybe there's something that you're drawn to. It's an artsy, crapsy, whatever. Something that you do just as a release. It's not, not for making money, you know, just a little pastime. Maybe you do like to paint just for quiet, but it's not something where like, oh, I want to put my 
all my art up in the art galleries and stuff, but maybe it's just something you do for yourself. And that's okay too. That's part of your self care. That's part of recharging. So I don't know where these rambles are going. Let's get ourselves set up here. Let's see if we got a, a major arcana going to pop out for us from this medicine woman tarot. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because it's Monday. It's Monday, Monday, Monday. Medicine Monday. Just another manic Monday. Oh, I wish it was Sunday. Cause that's my fun day My I don't have to run day It's just another manic Monday <laughs> What's that? Who sings that one? Is that the bangles? Oh Jesus forgive me I, I can't I can't I can't remember Hmm Bangles maybe okay <sighs> Calling in all of our directions are from the east. That's a path of illumination and clarity. Place of fire. Place of man. Calling back all of our energies from the south. That's the innocence, the child, the waters, the emotions. <sighs> Calling back all of our energies from the west. That's the physical, the woman, the earth. Place of introspection. <sighs> Calling back all of our energies from the north. The air, the wisdom, mental the wisdom years we walk the red road from the south in childhood we work our way up to the north right well hopefully we've got that you know it's been prepared sometimes we don't sometimes we surprise our parents right boom here we are you got a little bun in the oven now you get get ready <laughs> so discipline attraction preparation so hopefully we're taught that too to learn how to stand on our own two feet to be able to build something for ourselves to be able to make our own sandwiches Learn how to take care of ourselves. Hopefully those adults are teaching us that, preparing us for the longer part of our lives because childhood is the shortest part of our lives, right? We're going to be adults much longer than childhood. On the average, of course, you know, there is other stories and, you know, call them sad stories. Things help us learn. Mm. <sighs> we get up into that adulthood where we... We, 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 maybe we become, you know, or we've listened to the truth of the sages and we've shared our stories and we've learned from them and we've grown from them. We're not repeating cycles that don't need to be repeated. You know, repeat the cycle, healthy cycles. And sometimes if a toxic cycle comes up, maybe it's just to show us that we have gone beyond that. And now we have ways to deal with that, that maybe weren't like before different, right? So listen to the truth of the saints. It's more fighting, more fighting and all that. Uh, eye for eyes that nobody's got no eyes, right? <laughs> hey, right, then we don't have to feel with our hearts. I mean, the seeing is believing. East to west is the blue road of spirit. That's the steadfast mind. We can connect with them. And we have free will, so spirit will not impose on us unless we ask. We have to open up and ask for that support. We have to ask and then listen to the truth of the sages. Ask those questions and then listen. Be open to receive the answers that are already there. So and then that steadfast mind, we need to, every time our little monkey brain or whatever you want to call it, the human brain keeps taking us off, we need to realign. That's that steadfast mind. Line it up, right? No more fighting, see? Throw those arrows down. It's peace. Time for peace. Peaceful ways of doing this. No more fighting. Aggression makes more aggression, makes more aggression, makes more aggression. <gasps> East to West, the blue order of spirit. See, the will to do. We have to align our will with the source, with the love of all. Look, we have coyotes seen through those cultural illusions. And there's owl, and I use that owl feather today. Right, again, another one is pulling back those veils, seeing in the darkness, looking. What have we hidden in our shadows? That came up too, that shadow work. And that's not necessarily bad parts of ourselves. It's rejected parts of ourselves. That's not all bad parts. Somebody could reject all our brightest parts because they don't want us to shine brighter than they do. And they get into their head like it's a competition. Only one can shine. Look at the stars don't fight over who's shining. They're still shining now, even though we don't see them. Hmm. Well, look at that. What are you lining up your will to do? Up, below, and with it. Okay, I won the major arcana, please, that we have not had yet. 
Just the one. Well, two pop out here. And one of them is not. Eight of Bulls and the Ten of Bulls. A journey of love. Your heart is home. This is what we're all going for, right? Begin within. Know that you are worthy of that love. True, unconditional love, fully holy as you are. But if you never express yourself fully holy as you are, how is anybody going to love you fully holy as you are? I mean, I'm, I am. Yeah, some people call me crazy. I will put it all out there and I think, well, Jesus, this is the one. Well, you're not going to get freaked out by that. Not going to get scared away or whatever. But this is me. This is how I am. I put all my cards on the table and hey, what do you think about that? <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> hey? Because I am going to be me. And I tried. I got into a relationship there where I thought, oh, I'm not accepted this way. I tried to be something else that I wasn't. Because they kept saying, well, look back, look back. Because they never, you know, they thought, oh, I was afraid of commitment or whatever. It was just like, no, I'm not going to waste our time. If I can see this isn't working. If we got to force things to fit, this isn't, this isn't it. Just always believed. Always believed. Is it my standards high or not? You know, I don't want to anybody else to feel bad for themselves because I think, well, no, you know, you do that and that annoys me. You need to change that. But that's part of one of their little quirks. It's one of the things that makes them beautiful and unique, you know, who am I to change that? Right? So it's not, relationships are not about changing people or training somebody. I've just never been like that. Just two people free to be wholly, fully themselves. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Did we already we already talked about that discernment. I'm gonna keep that out. And we did do the lovers in ecstasy. Did 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 we not? I'm pretty sure that we did. But how is that, right? We're looking at that. And if that's not the one for me, it's like I've always felt we're all gonna fit. Oh, look at that. Right on the bottom. Transformation, death, transformation. What's on the top one over here? And there is a top one, the openness to the flow. The seed. Look at that. We got four. Stability right there. Which one are we gonna read? Or we're going to put them back in and see. But that's kind of funny how that comes out. That lovers, that ecstasy. Because you're not going to have to change that. You know, you match up. And if you're trying to change that, well, maybe that's because that's for somebody else and not for you. And then the more you're trying to make that out, you're holding that off from somebody else. Maybe they're trying to, you know, maybe they got yours, right? And you let those go. Right? Because we tend to try and make happen with what's right in front of us, Right? You can't be with the one you love, honey. Love the one you're with. Sometimes we do that. So we try to make that person because, okay, you're the one that said you wanted to be with me. You like me. You have an interest. Let's just make this work. Let's make this happen because I don't want to go out there again. It's scary out there. I don't want to. I don't want the sun to set. I don't want to transfer. I don't want to plant seeds no more. The seeds I planted didn't grow. That's it. I'm so unlovable. And we start judging ourselves. We start judging others. What is that? What is that for you? Beauty and equilibrium. That's ecstasy. That's the true lovers. Do we read that one? I don't know. Yes, I have it checked off. I don't have the command. Did I see command? I'm sure we did that one. At one point, we done the fool, did we do sunset, the right tree. You know what? We're going to shuffle till one pops out. Let's do it. Let's do it. One is going to pop out. But that's amazing how those all popped out. Right? So, the lovers, the ecstasy and discernment. Discerning, is this the one? Am I trying to fit you in to where I think you should be? Am I trying to make you play this part in my life when you'd be more whatever? That's where we need to learn that discernment and not judgment. They're not horrible people. And hey, maybe we're with somebody that they treated us like shit, but they find that one that they're meant to be with. And then, you know, that has nothing to do personally. It's just energy. Some energies don't go together. The more we try to force them, the more unnatural it is. Gotta let things flow. Let it go. Let it flow naturally. Discerning. Was this really for me? There's that rebirth card that flopped around. See, I say one. And what does that one do? Right? There we are. Rebirth. I'm sure we have not read that one. I know it's come out a couple of times. Rebirth. No, we have a not. Rebirth. I'm going to put it in the thing there again. Well, I need it closer for you to see it. Anyways, right? Because you like to see. Because you like to see it, don't you? You like to see it. The rebirth. 
There we go. The early stage of a depth shit. A depth shit. A depth ship. <laughs> the living spirit. Rebirth of the living spirit. This is the sun card in the traditional deck. Okay, let's read that. How does, you know, because true love and true relationships begin within, right? You need to be feel worthy of it and be your whole self. Again, if we're not showing our whole selves, if we're using masks, right? If we're going, oh, how can I get this one? What are they like? How can I be what they want and what they're dreaming of? And we try to conform ourselves or make ourselves something that we're not. You're never going to be happy pretending to be something that you're not. No. No. How can we feel fully, wholly loved just as we are and acceptable just as we are if we don't accept ourselves that way? So then we never show that to the rest of the world. Be reborn into your fullest version of yourself. True, true, holy you. Right? There we go. So, rebirth, 1753, 19, the early stage of a depth ship. That's the number and meaning. The traditional name in the traditional tarot is the sun card. Um, medicine woman energy, rebirth of the living spirit. Affirmation. I am reborn, a child of light, a glow with inner vitality. Sun, father, earth, mother, I am yours. In all things, great and small, I see the beauty of your divine expression. Wow. One more time for that affirmation. I'm just going to mark this up right now so I do not forget again. So, I am reborn, a child of light, a glow with inner vitality, sun father, earth mother, I am am yours. In all things, great and small, I see the beauty of your divine expression. The card speaks. I am the sun. I am the, I am. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me wave my way through all the hell. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Let's get the show on the road. Cause the sun's all glow. <laughs> Swing it, you know. The card speaks. I am the sun. I am the turning toward life that has been made by your individual consciousness. You have shed the old habits of death and destruction through your simple turning of the mind towards me. I am the power of regeneration. I am the turning point. You have freed yourself from the limitations of circumstances. Now, in touch with Creator, you express the one true self in new creative energy. Mm. You may find yourself suddenly writing poetry, painting, acting, singing, dancing, or perhaps choosing to bring another life into being. Oh, I got a grand child, granddaughter coming soon, very soon. Excuse me. Woo! Okay. You have now freed yourself from the limitations of circumstances. Now in touch with the creator, you express the one true self in new creative ways. You may find yourself suddenly writing poetry, painting, acting, singing, dancing, or perhaps choosing to bring another life into being. You may begin to feel as though you are a child yourself. That's what I get into. You have been born again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it is only through this experience of me that you enter the eternal land of promise. It is only through this experience of me that you enter the eternal land of promise. I am the doorway, the bright light at the end of the tunnel. You may enter and pass through me if your heart is filled with wonder, empty of doubts and fears. Like Jesus Christ, the sun, sun on earth, you have found the kingdom of God to be within you. 
This divine father light now joins with the mother love of your earthly being, creating a heavenly union. Let your heart be light and gay now that your whole and holy parents have been found. You are the new son, the Christ consciousness reborn on earth this day. Self-questioning. Am I more afraid of the dark or of the light? Hmm. Are you more afraid of the dark or the light? Are you more afraid of what you hid in your shadows or what you can see? And what if you hid all those good parts and all the scary stuff is out in the light, but all the good stuff is in the dark? Hmm. Are you more afraid of the dark or of the light? Am I more afraid of the dark or of the light? Self-questioning this week. Exercise. Oh, and it's coming out. There's sun out there today. Soak up the sun. Contemplate its luminosity. Think of it as a being. What does it do for this planet? What would life be like without it? Wow. Well, I mean, we can look in science and look at those planets that don't really have much life. Would there be life without the sun? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Meditation. Simply dwell on the face of Jesus Christ or any other master of light. So if you have an ascended master, whatever, remember, don't let things, you know, let that love come in. You know, whatever way it gets to you, that love is trying to come in and trying to get through you to be that expression that is you. Ah, uh, so simply dwell in the face of Jesus Christ or any other master of life. Say Buddha, the Dalai Lama. I don't know. It's for you. What works it for you? Connect with that source. Visualization. Imagine you are walking through a tunnel of darkness, heading towards a dark way of light at the end. Do not stop your concentration until you reach the light. The astrological sign is the sun. Foods and colors surround yourself. Ah, or golden oranges and yellows. Eat fresh foods picked at their peak. Then we have Jesus as an avatar. Over the 2,000 years since this particular son of God was asked to walk the earth as human, the popular stories of his life have become a very narrow, self serving legends. One of these legends may have turned you away from the religious path of your childhood. Yet here you meet again on the inward journey. Whether or not you were raised Christian, you have no doubt felt the influence of Christianity in your life or in your world. Whether you judge the influence of the established Christianity to be positive or negative is not the issue being addressed. Is not the issue being addressed here. Instead, we are looking at how an enlightened being, an avatar or son of God, might have lived within the realm of the Earth Mother, of the Mother Earth. Looking at the life of Jesus, you can observe one of the ways a divine soul offers himself as an example of living according to the sacred way that unfolds within him. The avatar may teach or preach, but always he or she lives the way to God. His or her mind rests in the higher kingdoms, not in the worries and fears of the world. The world is dealt with. Day-to-day -day issues are faced, but the avatar is guided by something more important to her, H-I-R, including both, to live as a son or daughter of God. And let's, I, I remember reading that everyone is a son of God. God's how God sees us. We're all sons. Anyways, you must rise, raise. Okay. To live as a son or daughter of God, you must raise your thoughts to the level of highest possibility. This may be called hope. 
You must transcend doubts by continued action that you judge moment by moment to be the greater good. That you discern. Mm. Seeking no particular reward for personal being other than that of truly serving the divine. This has been called faith. Often faith is misunderstood as some kind of trust that things will turn out as you want them to. <laughs> Divine will, not our will. At this level of consciousness, however, your wants have merged with a higher order. You're not so interested in what you get out of something, but rather the greatest good is happening for all. But rather that, okay, you're not so interested in what you get out of something, but rather that the greatest good is happening for all. You are not trusting that God will take care of you, but that God will take care of the great cosmic destiny through you. Hmm. You are not trusting that God will take care of you, but that God will take care of the great cosmic destiny through you. This is perfect faith. You trust the worth of your small action, if done to the best of your ability, to be a necessary, a necessary portion of the greater plan. You don't even need to know what the great plan is. Acting in faith, you simply assume your acts are a part of it. Acting in faith, you simply assume your actions are a part of it. Because they are. You are guided by love, compassion for all life forms, a virtue that used to be called charity. This guides every avatar's actions constantly. It must guide yours. Before the 2,000 years of Jesus' work on earth is done, everyone living must become an avatar. Everyone must daily live in faith, consciousness of the greater good or hope, affirming the highest possibility and charity, loving compassionately, only then will there be rebirth and liberation of the mother who has given up her life while her children grow from their 2,000 year infancy. The son, Jesus, was one of many children who fulfilled her dreams for humanity. Now is the time for us to awaken. You and your brothers and sisters, like Jesus, are children of God. You are daughters and son of a divine male and female force. And you have come to be the foster, you have come to be foster mothered by earth while you grow into spiritual maturity, while you grow to spiritual maturity. The greatness of avatars is within you. If you study the life of Jesus or any master teacher who walked the earth, you will get a sense of the themes of devotion that ran through their beings. You will see that there are many ways to serve God, but all require a cosmic consciousness, a vision of the good of the whole. A constant placing of the personality or ego self in the position of child to divine father within. Woo! Wow! Beautiful! I love that con! Being reborn into that. We are all children of the great oneness divine, whatever that you want to call that. We don't have to believe it for it to be true. Okay? And you get to believe. Whatever makes you comfortable. As long as we stop that fighting in our heads, we need to be at peace within ourselves. We stop this fighting inside ourselves. We're going to stop fighting with everybody else. <gasps> Maybe. I don't know. We're going to stop projecting our shit on others, right? Did Jesus project this shit? Did he say it's your fault? Was he up there on that cross going, look at you guys. <gasps> Curse you all. How come nobody's standing up for me? No. Did he run away? 
No, look at that story. He faced it. Of course, yes. And that human part of him too. Well, why have you forsaken me? Right? But that's how we disconnect ourselves. Oops. That's how we disconnect ourselves. So what is that for you? How do you feel about that story? Do you cringe at that? So what is that saying in you? So what's your experience of that? Why? You know? Did you turn away from the religion that, that you had grown up with? What has been your spiritual journey? Maybe a rebirth to that in some way. Right? Letting go of that ego self or whatever that is. So we got the sign and we're going for a moon card. Look at that. Yeah. There's a father sign and we'll go for the feminine energies over here. Oh, there's two popped out there. Look at that. The water and the flowing. We're going to go with the two. 23 and 16 we have here. 23 and 16. All right, there we go. Wow, okay. This is beautiful. I love mermaids. I always pretend I was a mermaid in the water. Keep my feet together and I spin like that. Flappy, flappity, flappity, flap. <laughs> right, yes. I love me. Yes, I do. I'm crazy, fool. But I'll always be true. <laughs> Nothing else I can do. I am gonna be me through and through. Just can't stop it. I just can't help myself. I gotta be me and nobody else. Cause I can't be anyone else. I can only be myself. Which is good cause I love myself. <laughs> Alright, so I know the love I am worthy of. Deep in my mouth say I'm pussy, whatever. But I ain't the settling down. Well, of course I'm settled down in my home. But, you know. Yep, yep, yep. I will be treated right because I will treat them right. Right, so they got to treat me right. It's got to be fair. It's got to be equal. It's got to be a give and take. Oh, come on. Why did I? I had them all sitting there and then I just got to mess with it. Huh? And then I just had to mess with it. Because you want to see the little baby face over here. That's my little baby face. <laughs> we had no. 34, 29. Here we go. The water witch. You are the liquid of life. Transparent, translucent as crystal. You are the tides, high and low. You are the flow of knowledge from the great depths. And pour everything upon the waves. You nurture all living beings. All quench, all thirst. Uh. <laughs> you nurture all living beings and quench all thirst. Give life to the heart of the world. Quiet and roaring wild, you contain, wash, and renew. Send roots into the earth, growing strong in your mysterious ways. Great healer that you are. You are a missionary of Grandmother Moon, devoted to carrying forth her lunar messages. Wow, right? We have to incorporate uh -huh, the father and the mother always with us. Both, both energies. Not one is more important than the other. All is needed for a life. For life, for life, for life. Moon Lodge ceremony. And there will be one that's a full moon, so there will be... Full moon ceremonies happening. You can zoom in. Maybe. I don't know. The moon lodge ceremony. I feel good. Uh, right. It's a swinging. And we're swinging. And we're swinging. Because that's the human condition. You got to swing it. You got to swing it. All this human condition. 
<laughs> okay, the Moon Lodge Ceremony, number 16. Air, fire, water, and earth unifying the light of the rising moon into the ritual of love, renewal of the earth, peeling off of layers, transparency, revelation, and healing of all generations. Gate of East is opened. Gate of South is opened. Gate of West is opened. Gate of North is opened. Prayer, intention, and gratitude within the peace pipe. Into the wombs we shall converge, shall sing and pray our heart's intentions. Water shall flow out from within us and wrap our skin. There shall be peace between the sexes upon our earth as we are heading towards a great rebirth. <laughs> creator, love and that, right? Motherfucker, creator, look at that. They here with us and look at that. And write down, right to the last word, the first one, rebirth, last word, rebirth, 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 rebirth. Let's bring it together. Stop in this war of the sexes. Man is not better than woman. Woman is not better than man. Every single human being has passed through the woman's womb. And we all live on this mother earth. We need the mother and the father. We need them both. Both energies. No denying either and both. And even in our children right now, even our children need both parents. In whatever way they can have them. Where they're both healthy and happy. Not trying to force things to happen. Where they both focus. Okay, we need to be happy, healthy parents for our children. Because it's the best thing children can have the best parents gifts can best gifts parents can give their children happy healthy parents if they can't have two at least one will do so you can only take care of you you can't control that in that other person in that other parent in that other caregiver whatever that is for you but it is so important for them to have those energies and to experience. There is so much and kids are so confused nowadays with even in reading in these books, people are getting so offended. But we go through all these things. The way to figure out your identity is to try on new identities. And this is what kids do. You know, they copy those around them until they find their own. So let's not push our beliefs on these children. Let them discover that on their own. If a boy wants to put on a dress, let him put on a dress. If the girl wants to play with a truck, let her play with the truck. This is how we discover who we are. But let's stop pushing ours on there because our little's in here. Discover what your little needed that you didn't get. So you're not pushing that on another child, which might not be what that child needed. That was about your journey and what you needed to learn. The child, you know, we're each on our own journeys. We're each here to be teachers too with our journeys and just showing that. You know, and if somebody is struggling, they have that confusion, they will be divinely led and guided to those ones. And if we're not sharing our stories, that's how we learn too. Right? I'm putting it out there. Not pushing it out there. Not projecting it out there. We're just putting it out there. We are sharing from that wholeness. It's so beautiful. So instead of pointing out what everybody else is doing, let's look with inside. Balance that both male and female energies in yourself. Because if you're not going to be rejecting parts of yourself, right? Because that's what we tend to do. If we've hit this stuff in our, in our shadows because we thought they weren't accepted, whatever, we're not going to accept that in anybody else we see. So, you know, accepting the darkness of others is knowing your own darkness or something like that. Or the greatest way to know the darkness of others is to know your own. I think there was a young, a young Ian uh, saying there. I don't know. But look at that. What is that all saying to you? Let's look at that this week. What needs to be reborn? What needs to be transformed and transmuted in your life? Your ideas of man and woman. What about that religion? What you believe? What, what is your source? Do you connect with that? Or do you think we're just all here on our own? That's that. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Look deep within you. Balance those energies within you. Accept yourself fully holy and true just as you are a great this a great expression of the divine we are all made in the images of our creator mm. yes we are no exceptions that means big heart hugs ever yes thank you for being you shining your light through everything you do
and enjoy this week too. And let the love and light be reborn and burst and shine through you. Love you. Right? Well, we wouldn't need light if we didn't have darkness, right? Hmm? We're always going to have the darkness. Or is there be no light? You got to have those balances or else you don't know. Right? Love you. Thank you.